Hello, welcome to Miniature Magic, and in today's video I will be basing and painting this Tree Lord. I've customized and magnetized this Tree Lord so that it can be either the normal Tree Lord, Tree Lord Ancient, or the Spirit of Durathu. So you will be seeing me paint all of the respective heads and weapons for these different variations. I'll be painting this Tree Lord in a birch theme, as I have done with the rest of my birch army. So without further ado, let's get straight into the basing. So I'm just going to start the video off by saying if you enjoy the video, please consider liking and subscribing. I do appreciate the support. So anyways, for the basing, I am just going through my regular steps. So that is adding any rocks with ice board and bark. Uh, well, here I'm doing something different. I am adding a wire tree. These trees are something I have learned to make quite a while ago, but they work quite well in many situations. So, yeah, I used it in this one. I do want to make an, a video on them eventually, going through a step-by-step -step how I do it. So another thing I'm going to add is a small crawling dryad, it's just like a cool detail to just be in the corner there. And then to finish it off I am adding some dirt and texture to the base. Okay, so now that I'm done with the basing, I'm going to move on to painting my miniature in my birch theme. So without further ado, let me give it a quick coat of white primer so that we can start with the painting. So to start the painting, I am starting with all of the base coats, starting with a watered down blue. And yes, I know birches aren't blue, um, but it's just to create some visual interest. And also apparently I've decided my hands look very smurf-like because I've seemed to have painted them blue too. But anyways, let's carry on with the base coating. So next up on the list is green. So if you notice I am base coating in order of how much there is on the model. So yeah, now it's on to yellow and red. These are for the glowing effects. Notice that they are very watered down, which helps quite a lot. So now I am moving on to the actual coating. So I am layering it up a bit with white. Uh, this is to get the white of the birch, but I'm still leaving undertones of blue to create that before said visual interest. Now I'm moving on to the glowing effect. So that involves painting the red in recesses and then the yellow on the raised surfaces. Moving on to the exposed wood, I am using a combination of the base coat brown, Rakarth flesh, uh, Mournfang brown and white to get that gradient. Also in my opinion, Mournfang brown is by far the best brown. And if you don't have Citadel paints, don't worry, most of the paints I use are craft paints. Uh, it's mostly actually the Rakoth Flesh and Mournfang Brown that I use that are Citadel products. But anyways, moving on to the green. I'm using my craft paint, yellow and green. So I'm just gradienting from the green to the yellow. Uh, as they mix quite well together, seeing as blue and yellow make green. It also ties in quite well with the whole bluish tone because of the fact that it is yellow and blue that make green. Now on to the part I was nearly most excited for, Spirit of Durathu's sword. So I'm doing like a green non-metallic metal and as you can see, I am using the yellow and green because that's what I'm using for the green all over. 
and also for the sprites I'm using the same thing but I'm adding a bit of a glow to them as they would radiate some glow. Well, in my Soul Veneth army they do at least. I quite like these small fine creatures. I decided to add them looking like they're flying out of the Tree Lord and I just love the effect so much. Also, Spirit of Duruthu's face can finally come on, because I'm done painting it. So, on to the drapes for the Tree Lord Ancient and also the red parts for the Tree Lord Ancient in general. I am putting a dark blue in the recesses and then uh, on the raised edges, uh, red. Also, I quite like the design I went for for these mushrooms. Uh, it's basically just the general mushroom theme, but it just turned out really well. Now on to Birch's famous spots, straps, or whatever you want to call them. I'm starting off with just a brown, and then later I will be adding a black strap onto that that'll be thinner and so that'll create a bit of a gradient and yeah it looks quite good uh it's not the cleanest i could spend more time on it but would take ages otherwise okay so now the main model is done painting and now it's on to the base I'm giving basically everything in the blue coat so that if I miss something it's basically just oh there's some more blue there um, but I will be painting it different colors don't worry so starting with the ground I am adding some gray onto that blue just to make it more dulled down And now I will be painting the rock. So the base coat for the rock is black and then I'm going over in a grey and then a lighter grey and then eventually to a white. So that's just all dry brushing. It's quite simple and easy. Good technique for making rocks, especially when using this ice board. Well, insulating foam, you can also call it. I'm also doing the same type of process for the grey dirt. Well, it has a blue undertone, uh, which I will be adding here now. So that's a turquoise that I've very much watered down and that'll go into the recesses and make it a brighter blue. Now I'm just painting the dryads, same old, same old. You can see all my other videos how I paint dryads, but it's basically the same as the big tree lord. Yeah, and then also I'm painting the dots. I do really like the addition of this dryad on this miniature. It just gives such a cool sense of scale in my opinion. Now it's onto the tree. I am starting off with Mournfang Brown, adding some Rakoth flesh mixed with some white, and then Rinse and repeat, add some brown craft paint paint to get into the recesses, make it darker. Yeah. Here I've got a fake plant. Um, so that's just like a fake house plant, which I've cut the leaves off of. And now I've cut slits in it and I have painted it. And now, yeah, just super glue it in place. It works quite well. To get fleshed out leaves on this tree, I have ripped off pieces of a uh, sponge and I am just painting them green and adding some yellow to that and yeah, it makes for quite good leaves. Well, I do add flocking to it later just to add the same coverage I'm adding onto all of the other leaves on the miniature. Okay, so now that we're done with painting the miniature, let's add some foliage. Okay, 
So the foliage I will be using is flocking and grass tufts. So I don't have actual grass tufts, um, but I do have static grass, which I am just attaching to some PVA glue. Uh, I find it works quite well and it isn't as expensive. And then, yeah, for the flocking, I'm just adding that onto the PVA glue, two different colors um, being brown and light green. I also have some light green grass, as you saw there. So all of the leaves on the miniature get the same treatment of flocking uh, with the brown and the green to create some variation. Yeah, it just makes the uh, leafy parts look more realistic and better, in my opinion. The point of adding flocking is like the point when you really feel the miniature coming together. It's quite exciting once you get to there. Uh, and also if you don't have flocking, it isn't that big of an investment. Uh, like get some Woodland Scenics, it's not that expensive. I would suggest it. The miniature is finally done. So let's get straight into the reveals. Hello, welcome to the end of the video. Thanks for making it to the end. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing, maybe share it to a friend. I would really appreciate the support. But without further ado, I'll see you again later. Bye!